Should mementos be legal? What's up guys? I'm G5 Cosmos here for Game 5 Smash, and in this video I'm going to be quickly talking over uh, my opinions and general thoughts based on what I can conclude and what data I've collected as to whether this stage mementos should be tournament legal for Smash Bros. Ultimate, of course. So uh, just a quick note, I'm playing in trading mode here, so you'll see that this is the, um, the normal hazard version. Uh, it's not the hazardless version, but... Um, we're obviously talking about the hazards off version, which would look just like this. So like when we restarted in training mode, uh, this is exactly what the hazards off version is going to look like. And this is the version that we would uh, be potentially using in tournaments. So the first point that I'm going to make is about blast zones. So I've tested the blast zones. I'm going to pull up my notes right here. The top blast zones are fairly high, um, but it depends on which part of the stage you're on. So if you're on the lower part of the stage, the top blast zone is the same as Unova, Town and City, and Smashville. By the way, I made a really uh, neat video about the blast zones on all of the tournament legal stage and, uh, stages and how they rank uh, compared to each other. So you can go check that out in the card linked above so you can find out what actually are the you know best stages to be playing on. If you want to kill off the top early, kill off the side early, or live longer, uh, all that data is there um, to give you a little information as to how this ranks. Uh, Unova, Town and City, and Smashville rank as the third highest if you count WarioWare as the first highest, but they're the second highest of what's normally legal. Um, so that's fairly high. That's again when you're on the lower part of the stage. Uh, when you're on the higher part of the stage, it is tied with the majority of legal stages, Final Destination, Yoshi's Story, Pokemon Stadium 1, which is not usually legal, Lilat, Pokemon Stadium 2, Castle Siege, which is not usually legal, uh, Yoshi's Island, and yeah, that's this. So that's where this uh, the Blast Zones rank for the top Blast Zones. So regardless of whether you're on the low part of the stage or on the high part of the stage, the Blast Zones uh, replicate other common tournament stages. So there's nothing crazy going on with the Blast Zones. I think it's actually good that it has uh, somewhat higher Blast Zones because uh, from this top platform, characters like Mario will get like, you know, big juggle combos and be, you know, closer to the ceiling, um, which will matter in terms of killing you early. And in that sense, it's actually kind of similar to Yoshi's Island Melee because... Um, this platform seems to be, like the height of this platform I feel like is more in relation to this uh, height than this one. Not actually sure, um, but either way, it's when you're up here, you're going to be dying pretty early if you're getting comboed by people uh, who ladder you up on platforms. But otherwise, the blast zones are still, you know, fairly normal. Uh, as for the side blast zones, again, pretty standard. Uh, the side blast zones are on the further side. They are the same side blast zones as Battlefield, Final Destination, Smashville... Uh, Yoshi's Story, and, oh, and Yoshi's Story. Yoshi's Story is slightly different from the others, but uh, close enough so that it barely amounts to a percent. Um, and that is the, um, what did I have it as? The third highest, third furthest blast zone, counting Pokemon Stadium 1 and Kalos. Yeah. So this is um, relatively, uh, relatively wide side blast zones, but nothing, again, nothing extreme. It's the same as a lot of other tournament legal stages. Uh, as for other factors that go into legality, um, well, there's one glaring one with the slant that I'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, but we can also notice that the main platform itself is very large. It feels very long. I don't actually have data on this as to whether it's longer than others. But you'll see this like right portion here, especially where there's no other platform. This feels very long. It's a very big stage. Could promote camping. Um, and that is definitely a factor. But we have other big stages like Kalos. Um, should we have two big stages? Well, I don't think this is as big as Kalos. So I don't think... Um, that really is going to come into play as much. Uh, however, it is definitely something to consider that uh, the stage is, is relatively large and that can promote camping. Okay, so other things we have to look at, um, or well, yeah, now we'll get to the, the big glaring point is we have a, a slant here. We have a slope um, and this creates a few factors. So the slope on its own is an issue because uh, slopes are something that it's kind of opinionated as to whether people think that, that they should be allowed in competitive play. And this one is are arguably more significant than anything we've seen in any legal stage that we've used besides for um, Castle Siege, which uh, is no longer legal at any tournaments that I'm aware of. Um, and the, the factors that slopes get in the way of is if you're trying to, like, space moves, you sort of have to factor in that your opponent can actually be just standing at a different height than you without being on a platform. Uh, and it really affects how you, like, space aerials uh, or even grounded moves can, like, whiff that would otherwise hit because, like, in other words, if, like, um, I don't know if I can really demonstrate, but, like, okay, so, like, if Lucina is like, let's see, does this hit? Okay, it does, but barely. Like, if, if you hit, like, a move that hits lower, it wouldn't even hit her there. Whereas when you're right next to somebody, it'll hit. Uh, and some of those things can be considered uh, inconsistent by some people. It depends how you look at things. Um, I personally think they're a little inconsistent. Of course, you can adapt to them, but I like a flat stage. But that's just my opinion. Uh, it's hard to say whether it's, like, definitively wrong or not. 
but that's definitely a big factor. Another big factor about the slant and other aspects of this stage is that we have the two differing heights on either side, and more so what that goes to in terms of the overall landscape is that the stage is asymmetrical. So also we don't have a platform here, which is another factor in it being asymmetrical. And the big issue with asymmetrical stages is that when the game starts, one player inherently spawns with an advantage. So in Smash, uh, as long as both players are on stage and nobody's off stage, it's always better to be below your opponent. As I've talked about in other videos, you can even check out my stage control video. I talk about that as well. Uh, and because of that, the person who spawns where I am right here with Joker has an inherent advantage because they're lower. And now this other person has to essentially try and get down because it's, you know, it's not like they're spawning above them on a platform, but it's still an inherent advantage that goes to the player who starts off. Is that going to mean that that player is automatically going to win the game or even land the first hit? No, but it is an advantage that you won't find on a, I mean, pretty much any other stage that doesn't have pretty much any uh, symmetrical stage. You'll, you won't find that. So that's that's a big deal, I think, um, that they're asymmetrical. And that's one of the things that, that along with the slant, really factor into how people, you know, think about the stage. And we have a lot of people that are already upset with slanted stages that we see in current rule sets. Um, like, um, like we have, you know, Yoshi's Brawl, uh, even Lilat, you know, you still have people complaining about, <laughs> myself included sometimes. And that stuff really comes into play. Uh, as far as, like, the general layout of the stage, um, I'm pretty sure that covers the main points there. Um, the fact that it's asymmetrical and that has a slant are the biggest issues that I'm finding with the stage. Um, so what do I think we should do at this stage? Well, I'm going to take a look, take part of my own opinion and also part uh, of just overall looking at the community. I think we should try out the stage, at least at locals or like, you know, weeklies, like smaller tournaments that still like get viewerships, uh, like Xanadu, uh, check out Xeno here in New York. Um, okay, I did not make it from that. And, <laughs> and, um... You know the SoCal locals. I think we should. I think we should try it out because if we don't try it out, people are never going to let it go. You know, people are, who are, you know, supporters of it who want to try it out are always going to say we could have used this, we could have used this. If we try it out, we at least get to see how it is. Uh, maybe it'll stay legal, but my prediction is if we try it out, uh, eventually people won't like it because people don't seem to like these kind of stages. They have slightly less consistent factors uh, in, in in their opinions, at least. I'm not really saying that I agree or disagree in terms of that specifically. But I don't think it'll wind up staying legal because there are so many other stages that people are already banning. Like, we got rid of Castle Siege, and this stage is not that similar to Castle Siege, but in terms of what's, like, quote-unquote wrong with it, it is. It doesn't have, like, the small side blast zones like Castle Siege does, but and the small stage size in general, but having, like, two main heights and then having, like, a big slope in the middle is something that was, um, you know, notable about Castle Siege. That's uh, why probably the majority of people didn't like Castle Siege was because of that, and this stage has that too. So I don't expect it to stay legal if it was to be made legal, but I do think we should try it out because we need to see. As for my own opinion, I like diversity in stages. I like having more options, but I also don't like slopes. Uh, the asymmetrical factor doesn't bother me in terms of like, I don't like it. It doesn't really affect me playing on it that much, but conceptually I do think it's unfair because of the one player getting the inherent advantage spawning out. Um, and yeah, I, I just personally dislike playing on slants a lot because it affects, it also affects like auto cancel timings. Uh, I don't know Joker's move set well enough to know exactly how his auto cancels are going to be affected. And in general, auto cancels aren't as important in this game because most moves you can just land with them and they have really low landing, so it's better just fast fall uh, instead of auto canceling anyway. But there are definitely some moves where you want to auto cancel them and that's going to be a lot trickier. Uh, so for example, you would auto cancel something earlier if you like jump down or if you're jumping up, you're going to be landing sooner. So certain moves that would like auto cancel out of a short hop wouldn't anymore. That happens on other stages too, like Lilat and uh, you know, probably really inconsistent on um, Yoshi's Brawl. But yeah, guys, those are the main points here. Uh, let me know in the comments how you feel. Do you think uh, we should have mementos as a legal tournament stage? Do you like the stage? Do you hate the stage? How do you feel? Let me know. And make sure you click that subscribe button to check out more tech and tip videos from Game 5 Smash. Definitely check out that Blast Zone video if you want to learn more about other Blast Zones in general. Yeah, guys, that's going to about wrap up this video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.